So we're now going to show you how to process an in-house booking. Now, an in-house booking is um, a booking that you're making as the event organizer on behalf of the customer. Now, this might be then customers walking up to your event and buying tickets on the door. It might be that you offer a telephone box office service in advance of the event, or you could just be pre-allocating tickets to a guest list or staff members, VIPs, family or friends, etc. The process will be exactly the same for either of these scenarios. Um, to get started, then hopefully you'll be logged into your ticket source account already and your event will be on sale and active. Uh, we can see the example, I've got a few, a uh, couple of events with um, some multiple dates on there. If you have multiple events and you're looking to find a specific one, you can filter your search results. If you just uh, use a filter in the top right hand corner and start typing in a keyword of the event title, that will filter the results down on the screen there. Um, similarly, if you know the date of the event, you can use a date filter at the top of the page to filter down to a specific event. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you a very simple process of how to book a straightforward general admission in-house booking, and we'll come back and add some more complicated scenarios and some different options as we go. So to get started then, all you need to do is click on the Book Now button to the right of the screen. This will take you through the in-house booking process. Um, if we then select how many tickets we'd like to on here, we'll see the option then for payment options. Uh, so I'm going to keep this simple for now and come back to the different options available. Um, so I'm going to say this is a cash payment and scroll down and go through to the checkout. On here, then we're going to ask them the details of the customer. Again, to keep it simple, I'm just going to put in a name and an email address to send the customer a copy of their tickets. So on here, I'm going to put in the first name and the uh, surname on there. Okay. Underneath them, we've got the ability to uh, add in the email address, as I mentioned before. So I'm going to pop that into the system. And scrolling down, then you'll see at the bottom of the page the ability to book tickets. So nice and straightforward, nice and quick, we'll see that this booking has now been confirmed. If you were to run your sales report, you'll see that you have an in-house booking for £20 for two general admission tickets for this event. The customer would have been sent a copy of their e-ticket, so they'll be able to uh, download and bring on a mobile device or print at home, and that's all sorted. So if you're happy with that and that's everything you need to do, all you need to do then is return to the dashboard, and that will take you back to your home screen. Nice and straightforward. So now I'm going to show you then in a bit more detail um, some of the other options that you have available. So I've just expanded my filters out to all of my events and I'm going to look at the stand up comedy night, which is a reserved seated event. If I click on here, then the book now process, um, this is a reserved seating option. So now we have a seating plan. So same kind of principle, select the area that the customer would like to be sat in. And then we select how many tickets we would like. So for here, then I'm going to say I want um, just then two concessions and two adults, that's four tickets in total. And if I click on the next button, then it will take you into the seating graphic. And all you need to do is allocate the specific seats that they would like to be sat in. Okay. Clicking on the next button, then we'll take you back to the screen that we saw previously on our example. Now, on here, then we're going to spend a bit more time showing you what the other buttons do. We can see a summary of what they've booked. If you've made a mistake and selected the wrong number of seats or the wrong seat allocation, there's the option to change ticket selection that will take you back through the process. If you decided you don't want to complete the booking, then simply remove the ticket selection. That will clear the basket and take you back to your dashboard. There is the ability for you to set up in-house booking fees. Now, TicketSource doesn't charge any booking fees for uh, in-house bookings that you process, but you may want to apply your own fee to that. So you'll see the ability in here to apply an additional fee on top of the ticket price if you would like to. Underneath them, we have the payment options. So these are the default payment options that we have, cash, check, complimentary, and reservation. You can add in your own payment options. So if you uh, take things like vouchers or things like that outside of the system, you can add in some additional descriptions to that. Um, you'll see some of the payment options do specific tasks. If I select the complimentary option, you'll see this is how then you can allocate free tickets for your event. If you want to give free tickets to someone to attend, you'll see that it is zero priced. And you can also reserve tickets as well. So actually uh, reserve the tickets under the customer's name, but take a payment at a later date. And then we'll show you some tools on that later on. Okay. Underneath then you'll see the ability to add in additional notes. These show on the uh, front of house report and things like that, so staff can be aware. So maybe it might be uh, someone that needs access requirements. 
uh, you can add in some additional notes that we just show on the front of our report that so the staff on the day will just be aware of something about that customer if you would like to. Okay. Now at the moment we've just got one event in our basket, but you do have the ability to book multiple events within one transaction. So if I scroll down to the bottom, then you'll see the option to continue shopping. And this will take us back to the uh, dashboard to be able to select the next event. So I'm going to book the Sound Up Comedy Night and the Lunchtime Concert as well. Um, so I'm going to go through the same principle, select how many tickets, clicking on the next button will take you back to the screen. But what we can see here that we've built up the basket to buy multiple events in the same transaction. So if I scroll down, I'm now going to go through to proceed to the checkout, and this will take us to the uh, customer details. Now, if you have an existing database or you have existing bookers that are on there, then what you can do is search for existing accounts that are already on your database. So I've just popped in the surname Smith, and we can see here that Steve Smith has already booked tickets before. So I'm going to highlight the customer and select the customer on here. Now, this is going to link it then to the transaction because Steve has booked before. He's already put in his address and telephone number and email address and his marketing option. So we don't have to add that in for scratch. It's a great tool to speed up the process if you've got repeat bookers on there. If you've made a mistake, there's always the option to clear the customer details and that will just wipe this form blank so you can start again. Okay, so if you want to ever build it up then, so I'm going to pop in my details on here. Um, you've got the ability to then add in the address from scratch, save having to do it uh, right from the beginning. You can actually put in uh, the postcode and then do the postcode lookup option using this button on the right hand side. We'll see here the matching addresses will show below and all you need to do is select the relevant first line of the address, double click or select down the bottom and that will link the address to it. Obviously, telephone number, then you can add in nice and easily into the box. And then uh, the email address, you can pop in there quite simply. Underneath it, you'll see a little tick box shows up under the email. This is the ability to send a booking confirmation email to the customer. But if you're looking to follow this up or send it through a separate email, you can disable this option and just send it uh, manually to the customer outside of the system. It gives you that tool there. Underneath then we have the referral options which the customers are asked online, so how they heard about the event. So if you're speaking to the customer and you know that they found it for social media or your website, you can actually allocate that for your marketing referral. And underneath then you can ask the customer if they can be contacted by you for future events and services. And obviously if it wants to be email, post or SMS, you just select their option below. So that's nice and straightforward there too. Once you're happy, then you're going to click on book tickets. And again, this booking will be confirmed with the two tickets on there. OK, um, scrolling down, then you'll see some other buttons other than return to dashboard. You have the ability to link a thermal ticket printer to ticket source. So actually plugging in a printer and printing tickets straight from the system. If I click on that, if I had a printer connected, those would be physically coming out and you can hand those to the customer. You've got the option then to um, print an e-ticket so that would be on a A4 um, page that you can actually print it straight from your standard printer or you have the ability to download the e-ticket and actually view it on the screen so this might be the ability just to attach the pdf to an email if you're contacting the customer from another service here we can see an example of those tickets okay once you're happy then clicking on return to the dashboard and that'll take you back to your home screen so hopefully you found that useful and this is how to just process a very straightforward in-house booking.